The moon, it's interesting. It's useful. Besides just places to live, it's useful for its resources. And we call this in situ resource utilization. It's something engineers think up. But basically what it is, is you don't need to carry everything for a sustained presence on another planet with you from Mother Earth. Particularly things that you need by the thousands, if not tens of thousands of tons. Not pounds, tons. Things like bricks, cement, mortar, glass, powder for 3D printing. We're 3D printing with Lunar Regulus Simulant at the Kennedy Space Center. Really neat stuff. So these are things that you need, bulk materials, simply for their physical properties or their chemical properties, like rocket propellant. We have learned rather recently something we didn't know during the Apollo days. We have learned that there's water on the moon. It's in the polar regions, inside of craters that are so deep, the light of the sun never shines there. And it gets cold, and water gets trapped there over time. And we know that there's vast quantities of water in the form of ice and frost in these craters in the poles on the moon. And there's solar energy on the moon. Near the poles, around the rims of these craters, you have near continuous solar energy. So you have this beautiful juxtaposition of energy and resources right next to each other. This involves using chemistry to win these resources. The kind of chemistry we're talking about to make these bricks and mortar and cement and, and rocket fuel by taking the water and you can make the best rocket propellant we currently have for human transport, hydrogen and oxygen. Let's look at land and sea vehicles, cars, trucks, trades, boats, ships. And these require basic chemistry. Chemistry that is something 19th century industrial chemistry would do. The chemistry we're talking about is 1850 kind of chemistry. And many of these processes, smelting, melting, sintering, the Romans could have done. So you read all over the internet about people and they run their car on water and hydrogen fuel cells and so on. You're running your car on hydrogen. You can't run a car on water. But you're using water. Right. You use water as the source material. You run electricity through it, mm -hmm. and it breaks it down into hydrogen and oxygen, and then you can burn the hydrogen. No way. Yeah, that's the volume it takes to store enough hydrogen to propel this car close to 400 miles, just about what it gets running on a full tank of gas. Wow. And it's a lot safer than gasoline. Really? Yeah, these tanks can be shot at with incendiary bullets or cut in half with a chainsaw, and you could throw a match on them. They just smolder like a cigarette, and I can't say that about a gas tank. Here, only the hydrogen that you need is released from the tank. When the tank's heated, it produces hydrogen, and the car burns it. So there's never much gaseous hydrogen in the system at any given time. Why can't everybody do this? I mean, gas is you know, going at $5 a gallon. Right. The whole country's falling apart. We're, you know, killing people all over the world for oil. And, and this, you're driving a car on this, right. and you can do it, and you can convert any other car. Yeah, unless I'm sure there are cars that have some technical right. problems, but yeah, essentially well, any car can be converted. The whole problem to it is the material in the hydride, the hydride itself, right. one of the main components of it is classified as a weapon material, and it can only be used in thermonuclear weapons. And because, even though it's not a dangerous right. material, explosive, or anything by itself, right. just because it's used within those nuclear weapons right. that are obviously secret and the components thereof, but um, because it's used in those, it can't be used for any other civilian purposes. So, you can't even purchase the material. No. Which is why we had to make it.
ooh, that would be neat. Nobody's been smart enough to do that yet, but maybe somebody out here will figure out a way to do this. So rockets on the moon will be routine, robust, and reusable. We could take resources that we win from the lunar environment and we can move them from point to point on the lunar surface. We can put them into orbit around the moon, particularly rocket propellant, so we could fuel up our rockets and go elsewhere. But then you need to realize that you are in a frontier and there's always new discoveries to be made, oftentimes just by changing the way you make the observation. So, when you're in a frontier, the very concept of been there, done that does not apply. It's the same planet, the same window, the same view, but now you're making a new observation. But wait, there's more. This is a picture out of one of the windows in space station. We might not even be able to leave the planet. Fortunately, Earth is just small enough so that we can escape and contaminate the rest of the solar system. They can let us out of the Petri dish of Earth. Thank you. Well, gravity, okay, it is what it is. Take it or leave it. 